Sebastiano Buster Alloy was born in 1907 in Caltanissetta, Sicilia, and came to this country as a teenager. He first lived in Brooklyn and later moved to the South Ozone Park section of Queens. Much later, he moved to Farmingdale, Long Island. By the early 1970s, he had permanently moved to Miami, Florida, where he would live until his death. Buster had three sons, Vincent, Benedetto, and Sebastian Jr., all of whom would become members of the family. Vincent and Benny served in the hierarchy at various times as captains in higher acting positions in the three-man administration. Alloy was an intimate and confidant of many of the city's five families for over five decades, an original. Buster, Bustiano as his close friends referred to him, was a very, very well-respected mafioso of the First Order. His criminal record, which started in 1930, lists arrests for robbery, assault, attempted homicide, and federal alcohol tax violations. He was a longtime Capo di Decina in what was the Perfacci and later the Colombo family. In fact, he was instrumental in the original formation of this family, another reason why he was so revered. He was said to be a good friend of Boss Carlo Gambino, going back decades with him. His primary area of operations was in the Williamsburg, Greenpoint, and Ridgewood sections of North Brooklyn and Ozone Park, Queen sections of the city. A young protege by the name of Giovanni C. Franzis, better known as John Sonny Franzis, started out under the watchful eye of Buster and would become his trusted eyes and ears and right-hand man in future years. Alloy is the mafioso who would propose Sonny for official induction into the Brigada. Alloy's activities included shylocking on a large scale, policy, extortion, police bribery, liquor bootlegging, hijacking, receiving, and fencing of stolen goods, and strong arm enforcer. His legitimate activities included holding a hidden interest in a garment trucking firm in Manhattan's garment district. Eloy's regime of soldiers and top associates included his sons, Vincent and Benedetto, Sonny Franzis, Joseph Brancato, Joseph Vitaco, Modesto Santoro, Vincent Giordano, Louis R. Curry, Pasquale Fusco, among many others. He was a contemporary of Joe Profacci, Joe Maliocco, Sally Masaccio, John Otto, Cassandra Bonacera, and others, as well as top members of other brigadas, including Carlo Gambino, Vito Genovese, and Lucky Luciano. In 1944, Alloy was one of 42 hoodlum bootleggers indicted for operating 14 alcohol-producing stills over many years throughout the New York City metropolitan area and its outer environs of Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island. This multi-crime family operation incorporated very intricate interactions between the co-conspirators during its existence, which lasted from 1939 through 1944. U.S. Treasury Department agents said the operation had cheated the federal government out of over $1.1 million in alcohol taxes. Of the 42 charged, 12 were said to be alleged ringleaders, including Buster, Sal Masaccio, and Joe Adonis' brother-in-law, George Gillette. In 1961, Eloy was named in a well-publicized indictment for working in concert with John Sire, a current and ousted policeman, and Vincent Santa, a detective from the Queen's Moral Squad, in the shakedown extortion of mob operators of a large-scale burglary and stolen goods ring. Eloy and company threatened to have them all arrested unless they paid off the detectives with Alloy in the background to operate their burglary ring, law enforcement made seven arrests, including burglar William Rudini, a future Bonanno soldier. In 1964, Bustiano had the Alloy name come up during a major Shylock investigation by the New York State Investigation Commission in Suffolk County during a probe of six major Shylocks said to control most of the racket for their respective crime families. Alloy's close aide, Vincent Pegleg Jimmy Giordano, a decades-long associate and minion of Alloy, who also happened to be one of that family's more active loan shark figures, was publicly identified as Alloy's trusted minion and island representative. 
In 1968, Alloy was front and center in the daily tabloids again during U.S. Senate hearings probing the Shylock racket, beatings, and the extortion of loan victims. Law enforcement produced a wiretap conversation between Buster's son Benny and another associate discussing a beating they meted out to a recalcitrant borrower named Frederick Fritzy Brown Reinig. In a second recorded conversation between Reinig and Buster, Alloy was caught specifically discussing loan shark transactions. This open court testimony brought Alloy much unwanted attention. In 1975, during testimony in a Buffalo courtroom, mob rat Joseph Zito named Alloy as the Brooklyn mob boss who blocked him from an extortion attempt to collect $100,000 from his victim, Emmanuel Cortezolo, who had invoked Alloy's name for protection. Upstate New York and Pennsylvania hoods Russell Buffalino, Anthony Guineri, Vincent Cacci, and several others were indicted and convicted in this case. Zito claimed to work under Buffalino and Guarneri and said that this incident caused a rift in the friendship between Buffalino and Alloy. Law enforcement tried to compel Alloy to testify in the trial, but he claimed he was too old and ill to fly in and testify. In later years, after Buster moved down to Florida, he basically semi-retired, utilizing his oldest son Vincent as his proxy and acting capo until he took over officially as his dad aged. Sebastiano Bustiano Alloy died in 1980. He was an original founding key member of not only the Perfacci family of Cosa Nostra, but the very foundation of Italian organized crime in the New York City region, a highly respected and revered mafioso to his last breath. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Mob Fireside Chat presented by Button Guys of the New York Mafia. And don't forget to comment and let us know your thoughts about Sebastiano Alloy or any of our other mob tales. You can also visit the NewYorkMafia.com and indulge yourself in many more tales of the underworld. Until next time.